So hi everyone, this is um, Dr. Shea from IMG Chronicles. I done my face mask, these are new normal. So I just wanted to drop a quick one here because some people have asked me, what's the difference between doing a residency program versus a practice readiness program in order to get a license in family medicine where it, with both programs you're still going to get a license anyway to practice and at the end of the day you're both going to have the CCFP designation which is you know which is true so I can only speak for myself you know and I would answer that question from my personal decisions so I was eligible to apply to both routes when I came I still had my currency of practice or I could have gone back to my home country to renew my recency of practice when I had done all of my exams and um, I could also apply for the family medicine program via residency route so very early on I decided that I wanted the residency route for two things I have um, a very deeply ingrained interest in academic medicine and going through residency I would see how that is in this country knowing that I didn't do my primary degree here so it was an opportunity for me to really learn about the systems in place here you know so that was number one secondly residency is such a structured program and you have all of the curriculum in place all the things you're supposed to have known at the end of the training for you to be a certified family physician right and I love structure, you know, so that was another thing. The third thing for me was, it was exposure to other colleagues in an academic environment. So other colleagues, I meant mentors, right? It was an opportunity for me to be able to identify a mentor in a less stressful way as opposed to being alone in a small community where I'll be very overworked, um, will be few, and I wouldn't have that opportunity to pursue mentorship and all the things that came with it and, you know, get real-time feedback, you know, with colleagues that you're actually working with, maybe senior colleagues, right, or even peers, you know. So that was important. And then it was also an opportunity for collaboration. You get to see studies that are currently ongoing. And sometimes you get invited to collab on them. Or sometimes you read somebody's work and you're like, oh, I want to talk to this person. As opposed to if I wasn't in that environment, it may be more difficult to have access to this person, right? So now these are all of my professional reasons why I wanted residency and then for my personal choice in terms of my family life balance I came here with school aged children and I was coming from a mega city I wasn't coming from a rural area you know I had practiced urban medicine I was coming from Lagos Nigeria which is a city of over 20 million people so my kids were used to that pace and that kind of exposure so I didn't want to come here and be in a small community. I wanted them to have all of the exposure they could have. And, you know, I have I have worked in some small towns in rural Alberta. And don't get me wrong or don't misquote me on this, but a lot of people have never left the communities they grew up in, right? So their thinking is quite myopic. And I am raising global citizens. I do not want to raise my kids to be based on their appearance, right? 
I want them to be able to hold their own wherever they find themselves. And that was important. <laughs> you know, you can imagine at my level, um, as a grown adult and being a physician in a rural community, I was told I was the first black president that was coming to that community when I did my residency. And I did experience some, you know, it wasn't subtle, it was in my face, right? Racial profiling, you know? So that I certainly didn't want to expose my kids to. At the time we came, there is no way they would be exposed to that they're going to deal with it they're going to figure out their own ways of dealing with it as they grow up as young black men right but at that age i didn't want already we had moved to a new country they were in a new school new teachers new classmates a different accent different people you know their dad wasn't here so so many changes and then on top of that then i'll not put them in a small community where they're being judged on how to speak or how to look. So I didn't want that for them. So it was very important for me, for them to be raised in a place where they had all the exposures that they could be availed to. So I hope this has answered that question a bit. But remember that at the end of the day, it is a personal choice. It's not one that Dr. Shea can answer for you. It's one you need to sit down and you need to ask yourself, what do I really want? Because I will give you an example. I got my designation, the CCFP, in um, April. I took my exam in spring of last year. I had a colleague and a good friend who we, we have been towing this path together so when i got into residency he started his practice ready assessment and he got into practice in um, rural saskatchewan and he was eligible to take his ccfp um in the fall of the same year i took mine and he passed so right now if you look us up on the register uh, on the register of the college you find both our names with the same designation it doesn't matter how we got there but we both got there <laughs> and we're both practicing right so yeah so in the end it's your personal decision and um, i hope this helps a bit when you're thinking about, about it and the decision is all yours to make so have a nice day everybody i'm at work i just thought to drop this because a couple of people have asked me the same question all right bye